So we welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. We are still collecting people and figuring things out a little bit. But we can get started with some introductions. Um, got some nice music in the background. I like it. <laughs> it would be bluey. Is that, oh, is that, is that you, Daniel? <laughs> it might be. I apologize. Yeah. Daniel, why don't you start with it, your introduction? Sure. Thank you. The newest person here, believe it or not. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you for letting me join the space. Uh, my name's Daniel Attridge. I'm a high school teacher in New York City. I teach in Harlem. And um, I was sort of invited uh, into the space uh, by Paul via uh, Alana Winnick, who's someone I'd met at a PD on uh, AI uh, in the classroom. So I'm really just glad to be here and learn from you all and kind of join the conversation. Cool, cool. And so we'll hear more. You, you teach 10th graders, is that right? For the most or part, yeah. School? Usually 10th grade, uh, 10th grade English. Cool, cool. I'm Paul Allison. Welcome, everybody. David, do you want to introduce yourself? You're muted. Let me fix that. There you go. Okay. Oh, I think it's there. Yep. We can, oh we we heard you there for a minute. You're muted again. Yep. There you go. All right. Let's try again. My name is David Cole. I'm in Berkeley, California. Uh, I was a longtime English teacher for many years, about 13 or 14, fourth grade, ninth grade, twelfth grade, and college. Uh, then I went into education technology and publishing for, oh, close to two decades or more. And in that period, I met up with the NWP, which was a really rewarding experience, and it continues to be so by way of Paul and his work with writing partners and the connections to NWP folks. So I've been joining this conversation and learning a lot. Rohan, are you there? Cool, cool. Rohan, introduce yourself. Uh, hi, my name is Rohan. I'm in Mr. Dronsi's class. Cool. And um, one of the things that we have, it's, it's sort of in our archive at this point, is a whole process of Rohan using AI to go through writing some things. But what have you been doing recently? Just briefly, you can t say more, but yeah, later. Uh, recently, um, the most recent time I used AI was was when we were using it um, in, in, in our reading with Think Like mm -hmm. a Monk. Cool. Chris, welcome. Hello. Uh, my name is Chris Sloan. I teach high school English and media production and photography in Salt Lake City, Utah. Mm -hmm. And I've been messing around with some sentence level stuff as far as AI mentoring goes. I like what your your um, thinking partner or your writing partner did. I like the way it gives examples. We'll we'll look at some of that. Yeah, Aditya, yeah. go for it. Hi, my name is Aditya. <clears throat> I'm an eighth grader in Williams. You know, uh, I'm a, I'm a friend of Rohan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, I use AI a lot when I'm doing like stuff. I'm, I'm part of the school debate team and I use AI a lot in, in, in the work for that. And then I've tried playing around with some other stuff, but that's my main way of I, I use AI. Cool. Christina, you're cooking, so, but thank you. Or you're, it looks like you're cooking. Yeah, I'm cooking. Sorry. But, no, don't be sorry. I, I yeah. Um, the, the, we, we, a few years ago, we had somebody nursing her child on. TTT, but <laughs> what are you anyway. cooking, Christina? <laughs> um, I'm making like a soba noodle, noodle miso thing. So mm. cooking tofu right now. All right. Not using Thank AI you. for that, as far as <laughs> I know. Sounds good. Shane. G'day, I'm uh, Shane. I'm a elementary school teacher from Australia, and I'm uh, currently looking at how we might be able to use AI to, tr to help analyze student writing um, to help teachers figure out um, what they might need to help them uh, be better writers. Oh, cool. And your partner in that group, there is a, a grade three to five group, Marina Lombard, um, Lombardo, yeah. um, is receiving a, um, 
award for innovative teacher of the year from a technology wow. group in Westchester County. Um, cool. So she can't be here with us. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, good on. <laughs> I, that's a great reason. I think that's reason. a really good reason. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and, and I think Alana is with her at that as well. Um, okay, so just to um, say a little more about the the arc, the uh, sort of place where you are in in here. Um, I just rearranged it, pulled this group into one little tight spot, and then there are six places around. And you'll notice that some of them are really well developed, and some of them um, are not so well developed, and that's that feels okay to me. Um, just to pick up on Shane's, if um, if you went over to see the little robot face and says I. You, you guys need to come up with a title for your group. I, uh, so far, I'm calling it AI Writers, grades three to five. Um, but you guys should come up with a better name that your kids would like. Um, cool. Marina has built a few. She built like four or five. Um, and then you built a few. And we you have some questions that we could look at. So that's one thing for us to look at. Let's just start with who's here. Um, Chris Sloan and Jill... Sadronsky are building uh, writing partners for an open letters contest, or at least that's sort of what we're doing. Is that fair, Chris? Uh, yeah, that's, um, yeah, I think that's accurate. Did you want me to say more? Anyway, no, and we don't know if that group will expand or collapse or, or condense or whatever we're, we're, we're thinking about. It. But yeah. Um, <clears throat> Sure, say more now. And then we'll... uh, yeah, and so since not everybody's from the US here, um, the New York Times has a contest currently that is uh, where students write an open letter. And an open letter is essentially a, it's like a persuasive essay, but it's ostensibly written to a particular <laughs> audience. And the most notable example, I think you could say that's in this genre is Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter from Birmingham jail. You know, he wrote it to these, the few uh, clergymen, but really it was like to America. And so the New York Times has this contest that uh, Aditya and Rohan are, I think you guys are probably working on that. I kind of adapted it for my students to um, write letters for local issues and to do a little research. So their, their letters actually have, you know, they cite articles or research and that kind of thing. But, in its essence, it's the same thing, you know, an open letter, the eighth grade students and my 12th grade students are both writing open letters. Yeah. Aditya and Rohan, do you guys want to describe what you're up to? Tell us specifically what you're writing. So yeah, uh, today in class, we just like worked on the open letters. So we'd written like a rough draft week, week and a half ago. And then we were just putting it through AI. Um, I had a few thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, we were using um, your your thinking partner, Paul. Yeah, we hadn't created thinking partners for that. We didn't do a create thinking partners today. I don't know if we're going to do that tomorrow or something, but we haven't done anything with that today. Yeah, let's let's just let me just uh, say that my sort of way of thinking. About, so, the one you're saying is mine. <laughs> I'll I'll take it. I'll, 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 that's fine. And it does answer a question that Shane had earlier. Hi, Ian. We'll we'll catch up with you in just a second. Um, is is one that actually uh, Caroline created, and and then I just added to it. Um, and so yeah, I did mess around when I when I added to it. Yeah, um, um, I think one thing that yeah, happens. Ahead. What's your first thought on it? You can tell the thought, and then we can. Go into yeah, uh, if you'd like. One yeah. thing is, uh, nobody, if they just put in read my piece or something like that, everybody, no, I don't think one person, I think one person in the whole class got their response in English. Everyone else got their response in like Italian or Spanish or German. Mm -hmm. So um, that's an issue I think needs to be resolved. I, I think I, Mr. Ronson said you were working on it. I looked it up. I looked it up and yeah. they suggested lowering the temperature. And was, I did that, and and we can see if that that solved the problem. 
there's yeah, also but, a, a deeper I, technical way but yeah. i um by by ninth period when i had mr duronsky uh, the issue was already solved okay i think another thing that kind of happened is i kind of felt like it did the opposite of what it was supposed to do where instead of giving me questions on how to improve my piece what i thought was the aim it just gave me questions based on what i'd already included in the piece like Hmm. Out of the five or so questions it gave me, ways to improve my piece, three of them are things that I already included. Hmm. Like it mentioned, oh, give a give give a suggestion instead of just complaining. Uh, obviously in a slightly nicer way, but uh, so, and this, which is something I already included. I had a whole paragraph on that in my piece. That's a pain <laughs> to be told to do something you've done already. <laughs> no, you should you should um, yeah, we should work on that. Indeed. Ian, do you, do you uh, do, uh, before we sort of move to the next spot, do you want to introduce yourself and, and say, you can't say everything, but say briefly how you've been using um, ChatGPT in your college classes? <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, I won't go into the weeds, uh, but my, anyway, hi, everybody. I'm Ian Coggins. I'm working at Lehman College, um, and Paul and I have been working together in various capacities for a few years. Um, but I've been using um, ChatGPT for subscription to create my own GPTs that are, you know, basically tools for inquiry that I'm using with, uh, I'm using about three, no, actually four uh, GPTs I've designed right now with a class I'm currently teaching. Um, and it's been an exciting process uh, and I keep developing more and more sophisticated things. Um, so yeah, anyway, I could say a lot more about it, but I'll leave it at that for the time say, being. Yeah. Now, say what you said uh, last time we talked, uh, you you started with AI as a skeptic or a... Yeah, I've had an interesting journey with this. I'm a language arts teacher, I'm a writer. Um, everything I do is language-based. Uh, my first, you know, and I, I'm also very fascinated by technology and I've, I, so I've got this, you know, I've got this excitement and interest in that as well, but I, I am definitely a dedicated writer language person. Um, and when, you know, chat GPT burst onto the scene at the end of 2022, you know, my first reaction was horror. Um, and, you know, and I had to, <laughs> <laughs> Not because I'm afraid of the technology per se, but because I understand human nature and I've worked in school <laughs> for a long time. Um, and that, as and I thought, well, I've got to get ahead of this uh, and and understand it and do the best I can to find a way to use this effectively. And that anxiety that kind of motivated my interest um, gradually transformed into cautious optimism which then as the year progressed and I continued to learn more and experiment more turned into genuine excitement about the possibilities of using AI in education. So I've kind of, I've gone in a, a you know, kind of 180 degree evolution, but without losing the awareness of the incredible, you know, challenges that this poses to so many things with respect to education and how human and, 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 and literacy practices uh, that people engage in. Yeah, and I got a quick follow up. Um, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned at the start of this, this is David speaking, hey. uh, that you've been doing, I don't know if this is what you said exactly, increasingly sophisticated things with your GPTs. Could you share a small example of what's in your mind at this point, an increasingly sophisticated thing with a GPT? What are you yeah, um, so I, I've i actually just put one together this afternoon that I'm completely excited about. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but I, 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 I'm just going to give a quick background. The two, that I, two main GPTs that I'm using in my course, mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, my course, one of my, my, text my textbook requirements for the course is having a ChatGPT4 subscription. So the students all have subscriptions to ChatGPT4 so they can actually use the GPTs that I design. Um, and they're designing their own as well, too. Um, in any case, uh, the two I primarily use, one is a reading discussion partner, and the other one is a small group discussion facilitator. Uh, and those bots both essentially work uh, in the same way in that they do not do anything to 
make content more understandable or to assist with directly assist assist with understanding uh, what they do is they they continually respond to the users to the students with with questions that force you to think back about what you're thinking think back about what you've read uh, and draw your own conclusions so they're very they're there's in that sense they're socratic um but they, they they simply pose questions and and direct you they will discuss things with you but never in a way that you know they won't summarize they won't paraphrase they will not explain uh and that's been my my guiding kind of premise so i you know all the way through this is i want to create tools that are going to help you develop your own thinking and go through a productive struggle uh you know in your learning process um and the one i created today which i've been playing with this afternoon um uh, asks you to um give it three different areas of interest in your life that are preferably very divergent from one another three different areas of interest and then it engages you in the discussion that helps you make associations and connections between all three of those different areas of interest uh, at both a practical and a conceptual level. So it's a it's a bot that basically creates a a a structure it curates a structured conversation with you about things you're interested in, um, and it mm -hmm. seems to work really quite well. It's been kind of exciting to play around with. That's great. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So we've got a lot on the tables, literally a lot behind you, but also, um, Ian, um, we're going to, let's jump into what um, a, a couple of us are working on, uh, what Aditya talked about. Is, is that okay? And then we'll swing back around to you. I, I apologize if uh, we'll, we'll make more time if we don't get to it this week, but we'll figure that out. Does that sound okay? Are you ready to show us stuff or... I'm not sure what to do, how to facilitate this right now. Are you okay with just, uh, we'll look at something together first and then we'll do that? Are you asking me or asking everybody? I'm confused. Are you hearing me? I, I can hear you a bit. You, oh, do you want me to share something? You, you for a little bit. I want you to hold it. We're going to do something together and then I want you to share after that. Okay, I'm you're breaking up a little bit. So um, let me sure. now I am now I am um, repeat what okay. you asked. Them, I missed about half of it. Can we'll do some work together? Yeah, you're still breaking up and go ahead and proceed and I'll figure it out. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, Ian, is the the GPT that you've designed um, on the subscription version of um, ChatGPT four is that something that that like we could get a look at to to see or um, yes, like, if you if you I've have, got a paid yeah. subscription, but I wasn't sure because I'm in Australia, would I would I be able to see that or how would that work? I, I think I think you would be able to if you have a ChatGPT four subscription. I can easily yeah. share the link with you to my bots, and you can you should be able to experiment with them yourself. Yeah. yeah cool. Well, if, if you're comfortable with that, that, that oh, would be really. No, cool. I'd be happy to share. Yeah. Yeah, um, Ian, throw it in, throw them in the chat if you could. That'd be great. Yeah, I'll do that. Give me a second. I'll give sure. you a oh, couple gosh. of them here. I've created a few. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, while Ian's doing that, <clears throat> it reminds me of in the fall, I, I have seniors who are trying to go to university uh, next year. And so their college essay is definitely something where what you mentioned, what I think I heard was like, they have these different roles, you know, different uh, interests. And your idea of linking those three is pretty intriguing. Yeah. Chris, if your students haven't heard about it, I've just recently seen about um, Google's Notebook LM um, that sounds really powerful, that if you upload uh, different documents you're interested in, you can select specific ones out of that and then use the AI to do to like bring together questions about just based on those individual documents. So the, the demo I saw had an interesting idea of using like nonfiction and fiction and 
combining elements from those, a little bit like Ian was sort of saying about prompting students to have three disparate elements that they're interested in and then finding concepts that link those or, or finding underlying elements that connect them and maybe something a tool like that might be useful for for your students when they're trying to look at those ways of linking ideas about who they are as a person and what they're interested in. Yeah. I'll, I'll find that link. I'll find that. Um, there was a little video. I'll find that and I'll put it in the chat. Thanks. All right. I um, appreciate your continuing. I think it's my problem. <laughs> I'm going to anyway. I but but I I put it on my hotspot. Hopefully that'll work better now. Yeah, you sound good now. Okay, good. So I want to propose this. I want to propose that we look at the um, thinking partner, and I just described the process. And Aditya brought up a problem with the thinking partner. Um, Shane is trying to do something similar with it, um, and so there's just some ways of thinking about how we build prompts. That we can look at together um and we're gonna it's in the open letters um if <clears throat> let me see if you click on right behind you that will take you to and i'm going to share my screen but so you can either go there yourself and follow along or you can watch here on the screen i'm sharing now and i know you're seeing everything now okay you see writing partners yes good mm -hmm. so um i do think it's worth sharing some of the thinking that we're doing around how this is organizing we'll do this very quickly um real world writing is um about a college about the college admissions essay and um jess early is working on that with us um and uh we built them last summer and we just need to kind of port them in here Habits of mind is something that, um, and you can click on these and kind of see more with each of them. Habits of mind is something that uh, there are 16 habits of mind. We, we, we paired two of them. So there are eight um, writing partners that filter through a pair of habits of mind to give you feedback on the writing. Um, that's like if you, David and I just presented at a conference that was celebrating the 30th anniversary of the habits of mind. And so everybody there was like, um, I think David, you said this was reading from the same scripture, <laughs> and so, so they kind of understood what we we're doing there, and that's kind of the principle here. Uh, using sources tool is a C3WP argument work. The the open letters is less developed, um, and there are a couple of others you can see there. Um, but um, I want to say the mayor of this one is. The mayors are Chris Sloan and Joe Sadransky. Um, and, and if you click on here, you'll find more information, the, the image here, you'll find more information about that. I wanted to find more information from the New York Times. I'm going to go on and be Caroline for a second um, and say that and show you her open letter. Is that, is that what's appearing here? Does everyone see the open letter? Well, yes. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thanks. Thanks. Um, oh, it looks like um, she's uh, deleted some other things. It's, it's fine. So it's um, here's what it does, right? It and and um if it's not giving us good questions aditya we need to think about why not so let's look at it and, and think about that but what it, the her notion was just give me three questions that um from my text that would help me expand my ideas something to that effect i can go back and find the actual sentence in the prompt if it's helpful i added to that tell me why that would be important to do and maybe that's how it messed it up, right? So just to say that sometimes the more detailed and thoughtful we get about our prompts, the the less good you're getting. So yeah, you'll, yeah go ahead. What? Does somebody want to say something? I think I just coughed by accident. I'm going to mute oh, myself. That's okay. Good. Good. So, and and then this addresses a question Shane had because. Shane, can you explain what you're trying to do with the um, showing some but not all? 
Yeah, so over on the um, the right hand side, so um, where the AI output comes, that mm -hmm. just above where it says that, uh, right down the bottom of the first box on the right hand side, there where it's got the um, reply, reply with AI and general comments. Mm -hmm. um, mine was saying, would you like to see the next? Um, uh, would you like to see the next piece of information there? But I wasn't you... sure how. Where do I type yes to say yes? I want to oh, see the oh, next okay, piece. Oh, okay, fair enough. Because I so... tried clicking on the reply or reply with AI, but then it just shot me into a new box to go. Well, let's ask for feedback again. It's like no, I don't, I don't want to start the process again. I just want to go. Yep, show me the next piece. Yeah. So, so what? We're, this is a bit of a hack, um, I guess. Um, but it and and just to say with with Ian here, just having using, you know, the, the subscription chat GPT and all, we can't get the kind of back and forth dialogue that you can get with chat GPT. Right. Okay. Method, right. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to do it a little bit. So what yep. I did what, just to show you. So I'll answer your question directly. You 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 just mm -hmm. hit re reply with AI. Yeah. And then and then you say yes, and it'll give you the re the next paragraph if you've set the right. Up that way. Okay. And that cool. wasn't working. I will. I will. Okay. I, I okay. haven't. I haven't tried that, but I'll, I'll give that a go. Okay. So at first. Um, Caroline's, my my uh, revised version of Caroline's prompt, and we'll look at it, um, was giving both these first three questions, and then it was giving, okay, now here are three more questions that you might want to use in a follow-up way, right? Um, so, the, so the first, and so this does require the user to kind of understand it and figure it out. But I wanted to ask um, Rohan and Aditya, were you guys able to figure out how to get the next comments up? Um, um, all comments? Yeah. You so, mean like so, using the coach? Yeah. Yeah, we figured uh, out how to do that. And we, our teacher just like, uh, OK, so first you want to use this, then you want to use this. So we didn't really have to figure much out, but I think it would have been fairly intuitive. Like use to reply comment by extending mentor. I think it made intuitive sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I, I, in the prompt, I said at the end of the first section, I, I made two sections. I said, well, maybe we should look at it, right? Uh, expanding. Yes. Okay. Okay, noting here, and and I, I this is sort of a lot of thinking through stuff together, and I apologize if there is a better way to do it, but I, uh, bear with me. So there is on the site, if you go to the writing partners, there is a link to we're starting to collect things that we are noticing we, we want to put in almost every prompt, like this avoiding passive voice, talk to me in second person, that kind of stuff. Um, you can just copy and paste that in. This first paragraph here, which is please pay attention to the language of the question and use that language, is what was causing us all that trouble. I quickly looked it up, and it's, it is a known issue that when you start asking it, it, it kind of gives you languages all the time. I actually think it was kind of a fun quirk, <laughs> if I can say that that you have to tell the AI, hey, don't do it in German, give me English. But what we did is we went in and there's, um, if you go to advanced settings, we turned the temperature way down from one to 0.5. And I actually had the frequency pen penalty up too. Um, again, trial and error is the best way to understand this stuff. But I, there was a suggestion in some of the comments that if you turn the temperature down, that language thing won't happen anymore. I'm worried. I hope it still picks up the language when you put your home language in, but we'll test that. So just to show you what done here, and Shane, I'm kind of uh, coaching you here, but others as well. Um, Thank you. This is, this is great. Keep going. Okay. 
<laughs> thank you, thank you. So, and I just want to say the bigger problem here is this, uh, just to step back for a second. We can make prompts that will have these amazing, you know, 10 paragraph, thoughtful, um, you know, deep, detailed comments. But if a student looks at that and says, that's, you know, I, it's not agentic. It's not going to make the student do something, right? So that's what we're trying to do here. The other, the other piece I want to mention and just put a pin in it because I've just started reading around it, but there is some question about whether um, the kind of experience you have when you have a dialogue with a bot is is similar or different from what a tutor, a mentor gives you, an actual mentor gives you. And these sort of one-shot things might be more helpful to a writer than the dialogue might be. Again, hypothesis, question. So that's what we're trying to mess with. We're trying to figure out. So what I did here is I said, there are going to be two sections, right? And then I, I said what to do in the first section. And then I say, at the end of that first section, say, hey, um, it, you know, hide. Where do I have this? Um, can't find it. Oh, here it is. So write your entire response. I'm saying this to the computer, right? From the beginning to end, and then hide all of section two. At the end of the first section, ask me if I want to see section two and the rest of your output. If I say yes, then show me only section two and not section one. Never repeat anything, right? Don't know if I need some of that, but that's what I put in and that's what we're testing, right? And then it goes on to say what to do in section two, right? Is this more or less clear? <laughs> One of the, I, I'm going to say this for Daniel, your, your children aren't toddlers yet, but one of the funniest articles I read is that um, young parents with toddlers should be the best prompt makers. <laughs> and it goes on to argue that you have to treat the computer like it's a, a, a toddler who doesn't hear you the first three times you say it, and you've got to patiently say it again and again <laughs> until, until it gets it. But so that's perhaps worth thinking of. I'm going to slow down and just I think I noticed you. something you said. Yeah. You had the. Yeah. Oh, you oh. noticed the problem? Good. Yeah. Go um, so you mentioned something about how uh, keeping uh, first uh, part one and part two only showing part one and then only show part two. Yes. And then part one and part two should not overlap in any way. Yes. Uh, I feel like my part two responses is. Uh, let me just double check this. You're checking it against. It, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I have I have the doc open, but my part two response was literally just a rephrase of my part one response. Hmm. Because yeah, what I did is the first time we used the idea expanding mentor, and then we used the idea expanding coach. And I think because they're separate thinking partners, they think that they're both providing unique feedback, well, but they're not. I don't know if that's how it's supposed yeah, to work. Remember that but... there is there is a second there is a second thinking or writing partner that is a coach so that's separate from this process just to say. oh yeah because what we did is we ended up doing the coach we did them the main mentor first then we did the coach yeah and then what i ended up noticing is that the coach and the mentor give the exact same feedback okay i'm gonna <laughs> let's pull back a second and just hear what you're thinking because um this was an attempt to kind of help Shane with it and you you can see that we're kind of figuring this out as we go mm. but um any thoughts and then Chris let's look at yours because that one's a little more to the point or easier to kind of understand Daniel what are you thinking have you have you joined a group and we're a mess or uh <laughs> or is it okay that we're working through this no this is I cannot ask for anything better like this is <laughs> great and I'm following along I think pretty well and um mm -hmm. 
just kind of hearing you're all uh, all of you thinking aloud about it is even helping me understand like okay this is what we should all kind of all be thinking if we're working on writing partners or creating these prompts so good, good. i'm in rohan your hand is up is that do you did you want to say something oh yeah i, I wanted to good. point that um something something that i think you're really showing inside like while you were making like inside your the prompt of your thinking partners that like, you have to be really specific about what you want mm -hmm. what does that mean to you though what's really specific mean say more like like if you think like you, you have to like tell it what to do like point by point like like every sentence like you got to like tell it what to write mm -hmm. like don't tell it what to write but you have to tell it like how to write it yeah, so a bit like how Marina had the two stars and a wish kind of approach, like actually giving it a specific method to put its feedback into as well, yeah. Rohan, isn't it? So it's not just saying give feedback, but how to give that feedback and what structure to to use uh, in it. Because that's what I'm trying to do is to, to shrink things down because I'm aiming for sort of elementary school and particularly for kids who are struggling with their literacy. So I'm trying to get it to really shrink down its responses to um, to make it easier to read. So it's, it's far less um, uh, word count intensive for, for kids. Other thoughts? And then Chris, maybe we can look at yours and you can talk about yeah. what you were thinking about. Um, when you mentioned elementary, I wanted to show you one fun thing I did. <laughs> Sorry, the, uh, and and it worked. I, um, which is I'm trying to show screen again. I can't. Okay, here. So on, I, I put this on um, one of yours too, Shane. I think this one. Um, look at this sentence right here. I added a thing that says, "Always add this code at the top." Right, and it's it's uh, an image code, and again, this is copied. You can just copy it, and it, and it, so what it does is, and this is something Marina uh, started doing with her third graders, is that when there was a comment from a human person, a human, a human person, um, she put a heart on the comment, and when there was a comment from from um, AI, she put a little robot at the top, so they would kind of see the difference, and this does that. Right. If you put this at the top, it, it'll um, it it quickly it it pulls in a little robot to put at the top of the comment. So imagine a, um, a little bit. I mean, I'm starting to think about if you could put in the prompts, "Hey, um, put this embed code into the into the result." Um, we could have we could have like video responding to stuff and so forth. So some of these possibilities are are worth thinking about. Um, Chris, let's go to yours, and then we'll come back around to Nigel, and you'll show us uh, maybe a little bit what you're doing. And um, oh, hi, Bonnie. Say hello. Say what you're up to. <laughs> hello, everybody. Um, Truly, I'm finishing up my dissertation. So in the classroom, it's all, uh, it's not. <laughs> um, so, but tell us what your dissertation is. I, I love what it is. So, yeah. Okay. Um, my dissertation if is. If you can do it quickly. Yes. Yes. Uh, teachers' yeah, yeah. perceptions of encouragement and support given to Black girls in pursuit of STEM studies in the high school classrooms in um, southeastern Pennsylvania and also in Ghana, Africa. So my degree will be in global education, training and development. So I'm really trying to focus on that as much as working full time in the classroom. Well, um, I want to read it. So, um, there, so yes. there's that. <laughs> Thank you. So that's really more my focus in these two weeks. I, and I'll just proudly say that I finished writing my last chapter last week. I'm working oh my on God. my um, defense presentation. So now it'll just be the back and forth with my committee on suggestions and revisions. So thank you, everybody. And thank you, Paul. Thank you. Um, thanks for giving us a, a minute here. 
with all that going on. I appreciate it. Um, Chris, do you want to share a screen and show what you what you made? Sure. So, and, and as you're doing that, I'll say I think it's really interesting that the thinking partners that um, that the eighth graders in, in Jill's class are and Ms. Sidronsky's class are getting, um, they will also see the ones Chris made because Chris, I did, if that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and and Chris's students will see the, the thinking partners that they make or the writing partners that they make because they're all in the same um, open letters group. But yours is, has a different tack. You want to, yeah. Share. So I um, You're not was trying to get to, okay. well, trying to get to sentence level kinds of things. So, you know, sometimes their writing is could be a little bit more sophisticated. Their sentence structure, uh, and one of the things, open letter or another argumentative essay they're writing is, um, you know, the use of technically it's the use of subordinate clauses. But some people would say it's the although clause, you know, like, although some people think this, I think that. And, um, you know, there's other forms of a subordinate clause. But the idea is, you know, to introduce a little nuance at sentence level, because if they're, you know, if it's argumentative, it shouldn't just be simple sentence structure because it's, you know, it's more complex and, and that kind of thing. So <clears throat> they will. Wait. Yeah. No, go ahead. You're you're are you ready to share? Yep. Screen or okay. Yeah. So you've so far called it a subordinate sentence mentor. That's yeah, cool. yeah not not but exactly. I'm not sure right. the eighth graders will. <laughs> but that's yeah, okay. Yeah, I know. It's it's not the most. It doesn't have a ring to it, does it? Yeah. <laughs> but maybe uh, it's maybe that's okay. It kind of makes clear what it is. Yeah, so I think I am sharing writing partners right now, maybe. Yeah? Yep, yep. Yeah, so as Paul mentioned, it is not the most sexy title. It's Subordinate Clause Mentor. And the short description is it helps a writer incorporate effective uses of subordinate clauses in their writing. And so the first part is instructions that um, we're pretty used to, I think, by now, and that is be supportive, use second person, quote from my text, that kind of thing. Um, the part that maybe starts to get a little bit more specific in my instance is, you know, I want to incorporate effective use of subordinate clauses into my writing. And, and then I ask it to point to two sentences that are well written. I'm not saying look for, um, you know, any subordinate clauses or dependent clauses. I'm just saying, you know, find two sentences that are well written. And why, I'll probably add you, some. I like that. But why did you decide not to say look for subordinate clauses? Because they might not have any. Oh, OK. <clears throat> and, and also, you know, like they may have written something that's pretty cool. That's uh, even if they have them there that maybe um, you know, it's, it's nice to hear some stuff that you do well. Um, and then the next Ch thing is, Chris, I, I just think it's worth noting that as the teacher creating this, you were able to add that nuance in. So but go mm -hmm. ahead, keep going. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So then it's show me how varying sentence beginnings with a subordinate clause can improve my writing. Give me two examples of how I might revise some of my sentences with subordinate clauses. And, and I would say before we use AI, we're actually, they're doing this with their human partner first. Um, and so they will do this first and kind of struggle with the concept. So they're not just going to pop it in because they do need to think through a little bit uh, the process, I'd say. And then, you know, find creative ways to tell me to do those things. Um, and then... Um, there's a little break here, which I understand is kind of telling AI that there's kind of a, this is a different section. It's a, de a delimiter. Yep. Yep. Delimiter. Um, and then what I have next is just like, I I'm pretty sure AI knows what a subordinate clause is, but um, this is just like definitions <laughs> of yeah. it. Right. So I'm saying, Hey, by the way, this is, this is um, what, what I'm, defining this as um so then there's like example so you know here's one little type and then it says here's an example um and then 
you know, for more explanation. And then here's an example. Um, and just different uses of those things. So it's defining the various, you know, like sometimes you use it to signal relationships of time or place. Um, right. So, and different examples that illustrate how to punctuate that and, and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah. Cool. Cool. Remarks on Chris's art here. <laughs> I see the Philadelphia shout out. That's the first thing. Uh, in your writing. Um, and I want to know, I, I'm looking at your use of punctuation in um, your, your um, communication with AI, um, and specifically the colon and the dash. Um, I tend to use a colon a lot when I'm telling AI what to do. I'll tell it what to do, and then I'll give it a sentence um, that I wanted to work with. Um, and I was looking to see how you use, like you have the colon, and then when you have the three um, uh, hashtags, uh, are, are they even called hashtags for real or is that social media talk? Uh, yeah, <laughs> they're pound signs, I think. In this yeah, pound. yeah, I don't think it matters what, what sign you use, but go ahead, yeah. Oh, okay, because I had I I don't use that. I've never used that in talking to uh, AI, and wanted to know how so, does it interpret that. Um, and, as I that in the colon, because and then I see you didn't use periods sometimes. So that's right. Yeah, I was a little sloppy there, wasn't I? No, that's well, not sloppy. Well, no, just, the question is how much what matters and what doesn't. Ian, yeah. you're the expert here. What do you think? Well, I, I, I'm just listening to this is interesting conversation um, around how you prompt and how you ex very as I think it was I can't remember who was Aditya made the comment that you have to or maybe it was Rohan I can't remember apologies uh, but who made the That's comment okay. about being very explicit telling it exactly Rohan, what yeah, you want yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. I found that to be absolutely true um, but I've noticed that with punctuation and misspellings. Um, I've actually played around with and tested it and intentionally created typos and, and pocket punctuation. And it seems with ChatGPT4, it seems to be able to figure out what I meant without any real problem. Um, that being said, I haven't like gone crazy and given it complete gobbledygook to try to decipher. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, but it does okay. seem to be able to manage its way through um, small errors and oversights. Chris, um, sorry, sorry to. I, I'm uh, the um. Did you take it away? I, I had shared this with the group. Is that do you want to share it with them again? Is that okay to do? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, it's right there. That box that's blank. Whoop. Whoops. Oh, do you have more? No, you. Yeah. What? Uh, so go to what, edit. Yeah. Yeah. And this is worth noting. So oh. see the share. Yeah, there. But look at who it can share with it's just those two groups right now yeah so you just want to share oh really you can't share it with oh. no i think there's something in my permissions okay oh. i have to okay i have to think this through sorry okay you i i did it already but okay <laughs> um yeah, because you're not an admin in that group, and there are good reasons for that. Because I'm testing this for you as a teacher. But okay, so I that makes sense. I will share it. I think I did already with the whole group. Can you show an example? I think you have an example, don't you? Um, in yeah. Your library. <clears throat> it's it's not a very good example, but um, oh. <laughs> I will share it. Oops. Uh, there we go. Okay, so they also wrote um, an argumentative essay on you know whether vertical farms are a good idea, and so I was just testing it um, last night, I think. Uh, so my question was, help me revise this essay, so <laughs> you know, so that I can incorporate subordinate clauses. We'll so I don't know if my you. students would ask that same question, but. Um, could it, uh, sorry, it did Chris, find Chris, could we could could we pause on that question just for a yep. second? 
because Ms. Sidronsky sent me a text while her students were doing this and said, you know, what should they ask? And I think there is a lot of, there. there is another thread of research and thinking about it, when students know how to ask AI for what they need, um, they'll get more from it. But a, a less a less skilled writer who doesn't have the sort of metacognitive asking mm. is is not going to get as much. So, and I'm worried and, about that. But well, yeah, I so mean, to fun. add to that, I mean, I'm essentially asking it to do what it already does. So, I mean, it's not the best <laughs> right. example. I think it would be more like help me write better sentences or something. Could we, Aditya and Rohan? That, that's a really good point, Chris. Uh, I think that's a really good point there. That, that that's why when I've been doing my my testing, the limited though it's been, is that when it says add that extra information, I just put in there, make my writing good or make my writing better, because the reality is that's what a lot of kids are going to say, mm -hmm. because uh, particularly for those kids who don't have the metacognitive language, that um, we need to try. To me, we need to try and design the tool to do as much of that for them in the background so that, that the kids without that language don't miss out. Yeah, and and to critique the own my own output here, I would say that I'm gonna add, you know, give me two well-written sentences and tell me why. And I think I might just do a quick definition of what I would say, you know, what might be good sentences. You know, it's just like spitting out sentences. And so as a writer, it'd be like, cool, but maybe why is that a good sentence? And then I don't really like just giving the answer there. Um, you know, let's work on revising your essay because I asked it to do that. And I think I might prompt it a little bit differently because I could just see students copying this and saying, okay, I'll just use that one. Um, so <laughs> it, it's got a little work ahead of it, I think. Uh, could we throw Aditya and Rohan? Could we throw that question to you about how Ms. Sadronsky handles that? What question to pose to the thinking partner, and I, and and how you handle it? How you think about it? I know for in class, for example, today we just wrote read my piece. Make sure you respond in English as like the very basic yeah. prompt. Uh, but when personally, when I'm doing it, it really depends from thinking partner to thinking partner. So for example, in that first one, the first thinking partner that I created, the one about creating debate arguments, mm -hmm. in that one, I ask it, first off, give me five arguments. That's something that I think is already put in the prompt. I'm not exactly sure if I did that. And then the second line I put in there is give me three, uh, three arguments that you can try to back with statistics. Mm -hmm. um, and that so kind of helps. It's yeah, a thinking kind of... partner you created yourself. You know what's in the prompt. So then in your question, you're sort of adding to the prompt in some way, right? Yeah, that's kind of what I do yeah. for most of them. Yeah, yeah. And then sometimes like, for, I have like a unique circumstance, like, oh, for this argument, this thing is not part of, uh, this thing is not, cons for example, last debate, I thought that uh, therapeutic cloning was not part of human cloning. And as a result, when I was doing arguments for human cloning, I was like, please do not consider therapeutic cloning when making your response. Okay. Rohan, what do you, how do you decide what question to ask when you're using a, a, a writing partner or a thinking partner? Um, I, I like decide like, like most of the times I don't need to ask a question. Like most of the times my, my question statement is just like read my thing, read my writing and and do the prompt. Like but um if if I would have something like that, I think um I would try making the question like really specific so it doesn't take in the wrong way and the whole thing goes in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Worth knowing, um, one of the things that uh, we put in a lot of the prompts is a little paragraph that says, pay attention to the question that's asked. Um, but um, yeah, so yeah, there's some back and forth in there. Um, Ian had his hand up and uh, Daniel has his hand up. Go ahead, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just listening in, I, I was wondering if this, 
if this is maybe what you might be going for as uh, in terms of like questions, could you program into a uh, writing partner to offer questions that they might ask as well? Here are some questions that I might consider and then even like give two suggestive questions and an opportunity for them to ask their own. Um, Cause even if they don't have a question right away, they don't like those questions that might spark something in uh, the writer. And um, my other thought was with the feedback. So Daniel, um, oh, you should go make that, but go ahead. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but well, yeah, no, it's, no, just, I mean, there's so much stuff coming up here. It's so interesting. And the other thing that I thought of um, when it, when the uh, writing partner off like takes a sentence, like I'm going to use a subordinating clause to enhance the effectiveness of the sentence. Um, could you ask, could you ask it to suggest a sentence that you may want to try this with? So like, how might you apply this feedback to this sentence from your essay? And then even it can even Absolutely. be evaluative after that, if, if you wanted to be. So the, the second box after the question, you could, you could absolutely put all that stuff in. Um, and, um, I just had a really wonderful, um, watching some young people in Philadelphia at, um, reading, reading the end, end of the Odyssey. And, and one of the thinking partners they're using there is, um, one that relates your personal life to the text. <laughs> and the more detail you put in that personal, in that box about your personal life, the more interesting the text makes it. But so it's similar to what you're saying, a little yeah. different, but yeah, yeah. Using that, using that, I, I call it the empathy box, <laughs> but yeah, using that box is, is, is a, a good thing. But then I, I want to pull back and say the big picture here is all the sort of learning. We can make all the prompts and set up the, the user interface and all that, but there's still going to be learning about how to handle it, how to manage it, mm -hmm. um, like what kind of questions to ask, what, what kind of information to give when I ask them. Um, and I think that's okay that, you know, that's a piece of learning that we'll have to do. Because I also think that, sorry, just this, that the more you know what's in the prompt, the more you know how to ask it something, right? So mm -hmm. I don't know how to make it all revealed. Ian, you had your hand up, and Bob, well, you want to you jump in? You can. Yeah, I, I actually, it's 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 kind of funny because what Daniel suggested was he he stole my thunder. That's I was almost verbatim going to say what he said, but I, I I think all of this brought back you know to me. Well, I mean, I'll just say before I say this, I'll just say to you, Paul, that we have to teach these skills to kids. We have to model it. So there's that. There's the teaching aspect of it. You know how you know I've I've definitely had that experience with some of my, a couple of my students in the class and teaching right now where, you know their prompts were not eliciting the kind of responses they wanted and once they learned how to write prompts that really stimulated the you know the GBT in a way where it would give you a thoughtful response then they started to get some better results, um, but yeah like again like the bots I've created I I focus everything on questioning and so like for a writing guide, you know I don't want I think I put one of my writing guide bots in the chat. Um, I don't want the bot to help them revise it per se or do anything that's explicitly direct. I wanted to ask them questions. I wanted to give them suggestions of possible because I, I thought about, you know, like how my my own self as a, as a writing teacher and how I annotate students' papers, you know, how I always did that. I, you know, lots of times I would put things in annotations like, um, Try try reworking the sentence and reduce it down to eight words instead of 14. And I would just say that with the intent that the student would, they would rework that sentence in their own way with their own imagination. But they have this clear parameter of eight words versus 14 that I'd given them. So I'm, I'm essentially channeling them to a certain outcome that is ultimately going to be possible with grammar, but it's going to be completely coming from their own thinking to do it. So I, with that that kind of approach, you know, that's what I try to put into the to the bots is like, give me some suggestions that will allow me to think this through for myself. And and usually doing that through having a bot ask questions in return to your responses um, seems to work pretty well. So Ian, um, 
you uh, we are you know we're not going to be able to have 150 people kids in our classes all purchase gpt4 right yes. this is the whole but, limitation of our moment yes yeah. but, <laughs> but 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 i still think there's so much we could learn from your experiments with this mm -hmm. um and if we could like spend the whole time with you soon i think that would be so you'd be prepared to kind of do a workshop for us yeah i'd be happy to do that um we just got to find a calendar spot that works um yeah. you know but i i would be i would be happy to do that as i could i really would value the feedback that i would get from all of you um i've been until recently really kind of doing all this work in isolation and i'm very much wanting to get feedback and ideas from people yeah we don't like the isolation okay that's not yeah, a good thing yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's so thank you for popping in tonight and yeah. thank you and bob do you do, do, do you want to say hello <laughs> hello i'm sorry i missed it's all right missed a great session um i will summarize for bob's sake that um on uh, on um and, and i think it's worth saying on this floor around this main section there are six other little tables each of them linked to six projects I'll just say one that I didn't mention before. Andrea Zellner is is really hot about universal design for learning, and so she's thinking through um, UDL from for writing, and trying to think about creating um, writing partners around that. That's we just barely started that, um, but she's excited about that. Um, I think that's going to push us to thinking about multimedia in these comments, but you know hey <laughs> daniel thank you um now you you are in a class or you, you run a class on wednesdays at just the yeah time, but, yeah so we're gonna need to find a, another way to connect with you but yeah anytime you can please come back yeah i i think i i i should be able to reschedule uh every once in a while i mean for the next month a uh, couple months anyway that'd um, be great but they, and, I'm and, so glad this worked out. Today. And am I correct? Let me just before you, if I mean, you just, am I correct that you have done some special ed or uh, special needs kids work? Yeah. So okay, I have so, a, a sped license as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's why I invited you. You may or may not have noticed, but I invited you to the um, UDL group, um, and maybe you and Andrea can talk and figure things out at some point. Love it. Okay, great, great. Trying to figure this all out, folks. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you. We'll talk right, soon. I Jane. have one thing to yeah, go add ahead. before I leave. Yeah. Um, if anybody needs to leave, though, go ahead. So I think someone mentioned about like uh, how people, how kids might just like copy this sentence, put it in their mm -hmm. writing. And I think sir, I had an experience once, I think when I first started using AI, we were doing the hundred words within uh, with New York Times on, yeah, youth yeah. on youth voices, and even if I I didn't copy the the thing like the, the the suggested sentences word for word, I kind of tweaked it a little bit. But I still like looking back on it. It kind of feels night and day. Like the sentences that I that AI told me to revise, they stick out like a sore thumb compared to the rest of the writing. Like it was very obvious that I had changed those sentences, and those sentences weren't originally mine. When you compare it to the tone and the feel of the rest of the piece, and so, yeah, what's your that, lesson? What's your lesson from that? I think yeah. that someone else had mentioned that it's much. That I think the best way to do it is ask for questions instead of asking for examples. Hmm. Like ask back instead of, "Hey, what can I change this to? Uh, give me a sentence I can change and tell me how to change it." And said. Give me a give me a sentence I can change and give me suggestions on how to tweak it. Like, um, oh, please uh, try to give specific examples instead of here are some specific example scenarios you can use. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, he's singing my song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all. I want to release you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank right, you. Everybody. Talk to y'all soon. Bye. Talk soon. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night.